Greetings one and all. How's everyone doing? Happy Cast Iron Wednesday. It's uh, almost Christmas. I'm actually shooting this video early. But uh, I kind of want to get it done. And I got a really good deal. And a nice big piece of ribeye roast. So, And I got some ideas for uh, later this week. With using some of the leftovers for Cast Iron Wednesday. Because the challenge for December was... Is... Uh, tacos so let's uh, dive in and I'll show you what I'm gonna do get the meat ready for the oven and then we'll uh, go from there. Alright so the first thing I'm gonna do is preheat this oven to 500 degrees which may seem like a lot but I'll explain why okay so this is uh, unsalted butter this is a stick, a whole stick of butter. I'm trying to do it the way the recipe said, but I don't run my heaters in my house, so I, I, leaving butter out will just—it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get soft like you would think it would. So this is uh, my seasonings. This is uh, garlic, two teaspoons. No, yeah, teaspoons. Cumin, thyme, black pepper, paprika, or Mexican oregano, and uh, salt. I just thought it would be nice. Put all that in my butter and mix it up. Now the video that I saw, the butter was very, uh, you know, very room temperature soft, but I may have put too much seasoning in there, maybe. All right, well, let's talk about the meat. What I have here is a two and a half pound um, beef ribeye roast. And this is um, cheesecloth. Got this at the store. I was watching a video, Alton Brown, and he had... Uh, wrapped his in cheesecloth. Now this has been sitting on the counter since I left for work this morning. He said by doing that you're letting it age. Also you're letting it come up to room temperature for baking. And also um, it dries it out a little bit and it feels real good so we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and rub the butter all over this. I'm going to want to do every side. I think you get the idea. I'll go ahead and um, I'll do a lot of this. Off. I'll finish this off off camera. All right, so we're at 470 degrees. I'm gonna go ahead and get my piece of meat in here. I think I'm actually gonna set it down like that and have it uh, rib side up. Make sure I get every bit of this buttery goodness. It smells really good too. I'm glad I went with one stick because I ended up yeah, you know, being a good amount. All right, we're at 500 degrees. Get this guy in the oven. Uh, really get it back where all the heat is, and we're gonna set the timer for 15 minutes. So let me explain. Okay, so. 500 degree oven, 15 minutes, and the idea is when the timer goes off, I'm going to turn the heat off and leave it in there for two hours. Don't open the door, don't do anything, just let it sit and do its thing, and then um, 
in about an hour and a half. I'm gonna start uh, getting my other dish. I'm actually not making a huge. I'm making. I'm gonna be making uh, creamy mashed potatoes, and I'm gonna be steaming some broccoli, and that's pretty much it. And I'm gonna be doing a huge meal because I I had some uh, stuff to snack on a little bit ago, and then um, I've got some leftover. I got some uh, pumpkin pie and pecan pie from my parents. To be honest with you, uh, yesterday was Thanksgiving, and I'm doing this on Friday, because tomorrow I'm going to be making something for Cast Iron Wednesday for tacos, using the leftover meat, and then I'm just, you know, jumping ahead, but you know, I can, I'm not going to upload this video until, well, as you see it, it's going to be the week of Christmas, so. Alright, so I'll see you in two hours. Alright, off to a good start. Timer just went off. Turn the oven off. Now, if you do this, I have said before, do not open this door for any reason. So, um, I want to take a peek, but I can't. All right, so I'm doing a little prep work um, while I'm waiting for the meat. I got an hour left. I'm going to make a horseradish sauce. So, basically it's just sour cream and... And horseradish, and just mix the two together. I like my horseradish literally to kick me right in the jaw. Put a little, little black pepper in there. So, what's done? Just quick and simple. Give it a little taste. Oh yeah. All right, because I can't use the oven to do any kind of other vegetable, I'm gonna steam up some broccoli because one is my favorite. And as I've said before in other videos, if you have a veg favorite vegetable, why not just eat it every time? And I suppose I could get sick of it, but I haven't yet. So I'll get this all prepped up. So all I gotta do is turn on the Turn on the steamer and let it let it do its thing. Alright, so I'm still prepping. I'm gonna be uh I'm making mashed potatoes, but I'm gonna be I'm definitely a skins on guy. Because this way I don't have to peel it. But I do want to like try to wash them because you know they're they're grown in the dirt. So all I do is I have a, a sponge I have set aside just for washing potatoes and vegetables and stuff. So get all the I mean you can you can see the difference. So just get your potatoes all washed up. So I got about seven minutes left on the meat. I got my potato all cut up. I'm soaking it in cold water. I saw in a video you get uh, fluffier potatoes. We soak them and get rid of all the extra starch. So as soon as the water, as soon as the potato goes in, I'm gonna start the, which will give me 20 minutes. And then I'm gonna get the meat out, let it rest. I'm gonna transfer the meat to this pan, because I'm going to make gravy with the drippings on this burner. I've got some bacon fat, and I've got some flour for the gravy, and also beef stock to stir in. Then I'll have vegetables, and I prep made a salad, and I'm going to do mushrooms in here. So yeah, we're, we're rolling along right. nicely. we got to boil. Off. Put them in the water. A 
need to uh, I said I need to stir but I ended up throwing away half that other potato because it had that big gouge in it start the timer for the thing and now it's time to pull the meat <clears throat> okay time to pull the meat I have not seen this since I put it in so I'm really hoping it's done well well there you go tipped over tipped over but that's not a deal breaker so I should probably hang on to this towel let's uh, throw a temperature gauge on it see where it's at should probably get you in here so that's what she looks like looking real good it is 122 which is a perfect medium rare Right, another spot. 123. I think we're good. Smells real good. There should be some carryover. Yeah, this came out a great temperature. Alright, so let's uh let's move it back to the pan. Because I want to strain what's in the pan and then make gravy with that. So. Let's go ahead and get this guy out of here. Where it's going to rest. While everything else cooks. I gotta, I gotta drain this, which I'll do off camera because fumbling around with the pan will be difficult. Alrighty, so I got my mushrooms cut up. Just started, just turned the pan on to uh, saute them. Potatoes are boiling. I bet I should have waited until they returned to a boil and then started the steamer, but hopefully the timing will work out. I put a lid on to bring it back to a boil faster. Then I just tilted it so it will boil. The thing about potatoes, though, if you boil it rapidly, it can um, you know, make the potatoes mushy, I believe. And then I got my uh, pan going here. And I got still got my drippings here, which I'm going to pour in once the bacon grease melts, which should be soon, because I get the burner going. Then I'll throw in one spoonful of flour. And then... I'm probably gonna make the gravy off camera because I just I've actually shown how to make gravy in several videos, so and that meat's looking good. Mm. It's gonna be a good dinner. All right, so I'm just melting my butter for the mash. Is my gravy ish? It's really dark. I haven't even tasted it yet. If it tastes miserable, I'll just. Uh, I'll just not use it, I guess. Looks alright. I don't want to get... That's on high. Just trying to melt that butter real quick. Turn it down. So I got some uh, whipping cream. To make uh, Put that in the water. The butter. And then I'll pour it on my mashed potatoes. I want to dump it in there cold. Sorry, opening the refrigerator. And go ahead and kill all the burners. So, go ahead and pour this in here. Then let me get my my beater out. Creamy mash. 
should have outlets close by. I might have gotten too much liquid in here, I think. Yeah, I think I did. And you might notice, I'm definitely a skins-on guy when it comes to mashed potatoes. That way I don't have to peel them, but also, you get a lot of vitamins in skin, so. So what I did is I poured in just a little bit of uh, instant, the roasted garlic mashed potatoes. Didn't, it probably took two tablespoons, but look how it really came together. So sweet. And my steamer, steamer's gonna go off here in a minute. Get this uh, wonderful piece of meat out. I want to cut the bone off. Just follow the bone down. I'm going to save this. I'm not going to throw that goodness away. And we're going to get this. Big chunk of fat here. I'm not gonna eat this fat. I'm not gonna throw it away immediately, but I'm sure this whole blob here is looks like it's nothing but fat. Let's get rid of it. Side of the side, I'll say. Alright, cut this guy down. Oh man. I hope that shows up on camera, but look at that. Look at that awesomeness. I guess I was actually off camera a bit. So let's uh man, that looks look at that. See how that is? That looks awesome. Let's plate up. I'll do that off camera. Let's think. actually taste this gravy real quick hmm. you know as dark as it is it actually tastes pretty nice we're definitely gonna put that on my mashed potatoes should have made a little hole here Oh yeah, look at that so far. Oh man. I said I was going to plate up off camera, but get that broccoli out. Got to have some vegetable. I need the butter in. Quite the feast. Made a hell of a mess though. Oh man, the potatoes are good. I love mashed potatoes. Broccoli. Mm. Also made a uh, made a green salad because I figured that with all the uh, meat I'm gonna be eating, a little fiber going down there with it, it just seems like a good idea.
Wow. All right, so if you're wondering if that just happened, then absolutely you just did. Wasn't watching what I was doing. Fortunately, everything kind of landed on top. But yeah, that uh, unfortunate. All right, so take two. I can't believe I just did that. Thankfully, I uh, the meat landed right on top, so it didn't even hit the floor. So we'll get this uh, meat cut. Oh man! Oh, dude! Yeah, that meat is. Uh, Tender, delicious. Let's dip it into the horseradish. There you go. Mm. Wow. That meat is phenomenal. Even without the horseradish. Oh, dude. Alright. Well, I'm going to go uh, eat dinner. I'll bring it back. Alrighty. So, dinner was delicious. The meat was... Man, it was... In fact, I went back for a little bit more. Wish I had now, so I'm just like, I was sitting at the computer, just leaning back in the chair, like, oh, so <laughs> no, no room for dessert. Maybe tomorrow. Um, anyway, I do thank you for watching. Um, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's gonna be in a few days from this point. I'm gonna, of course, I'm gonna upload this on Wednesday. So let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I'm fortunate about the plate tipping off. I just wasn't paying attention. What are you going to do? So anyway, uh, again, thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Catch you in the next one. Peace.